Josh Green here for Tungsten Tales. Once again, joined by Jules Van Dongen. Jules, it's been a while. How are you? Good, good. How are you doing? Yeah, very well, mate. We were speaking off camera there about the setup you've got in the background. A fair few boards there down in your basement. You were saying you hold tournaments and there's all sorts that, that goes on darts-wise in there. It must be a, a great space to have for you. Yeah, yeah. Lucky enough, my wife let me uh, convert the basement into a... Uh a dart room so yeah i got a got a few lanes in here and uh yeah it's it's a great space to practice as well it makes it a little bit easier and more uh more fun to practice are you unbeaten down there is that that's your home venue <laughs> yeah of course they fly the best at home yeah and uh it's funny i uh we have carpet down here so i always play uh barefooted uh in the basement and then you know, I realize I wear shoes when I play, so it, it might not be the best. But yeah, for some reason, I I just don't wear shoes down here, so I always practice barefoot. Oh, fair enough. Um, you had some success on the CDC tour very recently, which was great to see you holding a trophy aloft. Just tell us about that tournament and just getting back to winning rays. It's great to see. Yeah, I I had a fairly good weekend. The, on the last pro tour, I had two board finals, and uh, I think both board finals, uh, I was ahead and I should have won, and mm. for whatever reason I didn't. But but the overall feeling was a lot better. Um, I helped my own a lot better. Um, so I came back, and it was actually my wife that said, "Hey, why don't you go to Chicago and play uh, on the CDC tour?" Um, which for me. I missed the first weekend due to the pro tour. Um, so I didn't really think it would be a, a good choice just because I'm not in the running for the, the world championship tickets and, and all that. Uh, but, but just because I was playing well, I said, okay, let's just road trip with the kids. It's an eight hour drive. So, so we went for the weekends. Um, yeah. And straight away, the first uh, out of the three events uh, I won, and uh, yeah, I played some of my my best darts in uh, in a long time. So really, uh, really pleased with the results. Did you put that down to being a little bit more relaxed? Because you say you had your family there with you. It's not sort of the heat of the pro tour. It's a little bit of a different environment, even though it's obviously very competitive. Yeah, I, and for some reason, and I feel all North American players that go over uh, um, to Europe have this. Um, when we come back stateside, we uh, we seem to be playing better, and I think we take the experience that we get on the pro tour, we take it back, and uh, uh, we seem to uh, do a lot better when we come back. And yeah, don't know why. Um, also, probably had a little bit less pressure because I'm not uh, as of right now. I'm not really in the running for that world championship ticket, so. Uh, other players are thinking maybe a little bit more. Uh, you know, it, it it's more important to them. Uh, but but nonetheless, um, when I decided to go, I I don't go just to play. I I go to win. So, uh, getting that title was was uh, really big for me, especially since um, two years ago I had two finals in a row and I lost both finals. So to to get that win was uh, was really big. Mm. You mentioned the Pro Tour form a couple of minutes ago. It's really improved over the last couple of months. You mentioned those board finals. You're starting to consistently win a game or two on the Pro Tour, which is a lot harder than it sounds. I'm sure you can you can uh, adjust to that. Yeah, yeah. I think the the key is, and uh, Dirk has told me this uh, a couple of times. He said I I treat the first round as a final and. Uh, for for many players in in my position, you know, winning around is is huge already. So he said, look look ahead of that. Don't don't emphasize. Don't put so much pressure on that first match. And I think it's exactly that. And uh, uh, the few times uh, last year that I did win the first round, I was completely gassed for the second round and and usually didn't perform well. And I felt uh, on the last pro tour in Leicester, um, I came out of the first round really relaxed. Um, not tired, not gassed. Uh, you know, I had a lot more to, to offer, and uh, I, I kind of continued uh, uh, playing playing decent. And I think it, it wasn't until Chicago where actually my A game starting to show up. But I 
Yeah, I, I think it all has to do with, with mental, uh, you know, you have to just control the nerves and, and stay relaxed and, and really work on that. Hmm. Do you think you're now playing the best darts you've played since you got your tour card? Probably, yeah. Uh, I was trying to look back. Um, I can also tell my, my darts are uh, going in the same angle as when I was uh, uh right before q school um so that's a good sign um i think a lot of it is i i cut down a lot on practice i i don't practice a whole lot anymore and uh instead uh, i spend a lot more time in the gym uh, going back to what i've always done and that's uh, work out and that's something i neglected uh, in the last year and a half you know it's once i got my tour card it's it's a lot of travel it's a uh and before I, before I knew it, I was gaining weight and uh, I lost a lot of uh, upper body strength. Um, and, and so getting back to that, I think, is also key uh, because it just changes everything. And I think that's why I was pushing my dart a little bit more. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's a good feeling uh, um, you know, to work out an hour and a half, two hours in the morning and then and practice for an hour. And uh, I, I don't think, for me at least, uh, practicing more than an hour, hour and a half is somewhat pointless um because the hour and a half i do practice now it's it's focus uh, i don't even warm up it's first dart is is focus and uh it seems to to work better for me rather than trying to practice four hours a day and it kind of becomes a drag you don't really enjoy it and, and and all of that so yeah it's finding that right balance yeah you mentioned on the cdc tour obviously whoever finishes top of that gets to go to Ali Pali for the world championship. Do you think now for the players in North America, that's the the easiest way to get there? Because to be in the top 32 on the pro tour takes an awful lot of effort for you guys to come over and commit to all the pro tour events. Whereas if you've still got the option, despite having a tour card, is that the, the easier option? I wouldn't say easier just because, you know, you, like you mentioned, the, the, the level is quite high. And, and right now there's a lot of informed players here in, in North America. And uh, I think the challenge for me is, um, uh, you know, obviously making the right choice. But like now you look back, oh, should I skip the, a pro tour to be on the uh, on the CDC tour? Uh, but then again, I'm not that far off. Um, on the Pro Tour order of merit to still get in a, a couple of good runs get me right back in the running um, but for instance the Continental Cup which which that one looks like uh, I'm in a good position already um, but it falls together with a, uh, with four Pro Tours so yeah that's it's a very uh, tough choice uh, to make but for me, probably the Pro Tour is, is the way to go um, just because I have four of them and losing one match is not, uh, you know, the end of the world. But if I go to the Continental Cup and, and lose anything but winning is pretty much pointless for me. Uh, so the, the, the risk is a lot higher to go to, to con the Continental Cup. Hmm. So for these last few months, you're going to be focusing on the Pro Tour and the PDC and I guess the hope for you is to to get to the World Championship and sort of that would be the lifeline for saving a tour card and yeah. possibly being yeah. back on the on the tour. Yeah, yeah, it is. And um but for me the way I look at it more is that that it's just a dream to go to the the world championship and then being on the pro tour for two years and then not being able to, to qualify would be you know would would be tough to deal with, I think. But uh, the tour card part, I think I'm not putting as much pressure on myself for. Um, I would definitely go back to Q school, but uh, I'm still looking at a five year plan, and it's only year two. So the the tour card is great, but it's not uh, it's not the end of the world if I would lose it. Hmm. On that five year plan, what was the the sort of end goal at the end of those five years? To you know, to be consistently in the mid mid nineties, high nineties, uh, to to keep improving from where I started at year one, and uh, 
obviously after those five years be be on the pro tour and um and and be settled in on the pro tour and uh i i think you know after two years of fully committing i can already tell you that if i would do this for five years and, and be outside the top 64 uh it's not only um you know it it takes over everything you do i i I had to quit my job, but it's also uh, financially uh, a burden on the family. So, yeah, there has to be reward in order to keep doing uh, what we're doing. And and you can kind of see it with Danny Baggers. He made a, a clear choice to not pursue the PDC anymore just because it, you know, it becomes becomes uh, uh, very tough uh, on, on the family and on yourself. Mm. Yeah, I agree with you there. Um, let's talk quickly about a couple of the opportunities you've had recently, uh, starting with the World Cup. Obviously, didn't quite go to plan over there with Leonard, but um, you did get one win on the board, and it was really missing out by one or two legs. Was that a tough one to take? Yeah, it's it just um, it probably was the lowest of the year for me, um, just because the the first match it. Uh, just I don't still don't understand how it happened, what happened. Uh, just nothing, and uh, you know I was throwing uh, for three hours before the match, and everything was fine. Um, yeah, I think it's the pressure that just completely takes over, and uh, and then once once you feel uh, you have that feeling of nerves and, and pressure, it's hard to shake that off in a in a race to four and. Uh, uh, Le- Leonard played really well that first match, and uh, um, I'm grateful that he took it as well as he did. Because if the roles were reversed, I wouldn't be happy either with my teammates. Uh, but but he he handled it really well, and uh, you know, looking back, I think I had two two shots at a bullseye uh, in the last match. That if if I hit one of them, we probably made it through, and then the pressure is off a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, all in all, it's it, it's a amazing feeling to to represent your country, but but then you also want to deliver. And then when that doesn't happen in front of the whole world watching, that's yeah, that was that was very tough uh, for me to deal with. Hmm. What what was the dynamic like with Leonard? Because you're obviously very very different people and quite different players as well. What was it like being on a team with them? Yeah, so so Leonard and I actually we played uh pairs over here in the US uh, a couple times and uh he he's very laid back he's he's very easy going um you know I, I think we had fun I think we got to know each other a little bit better we usually are rivals we play each other a lot in, in finals even uh, last week in Nashville I played him in the final and uh you know he's he's one of those guys that He's never, uh, when I beat him or he beats me, he always treats me with respect. So I, I really uh, uh, appreciate that. And um, yeah, we, I I felt I could be myself uh, on the stage um, with him. I, he never judged me or he never questioned me or anything like that. So in that sense, um, just like I had with Danny Baggish, uh, very easygoing. Um, but yeah, not, not the results we wanted. Hmm. Let's talk about the World Series as well and the experience more than anything um, up in New York. It's, it's a tournament that's grown over the last couple of years, obviously coming from Vegas down to down to New York. Are you starting to see a little bit more progression year on year in the darts and especially the World Series event? Yeah, and that, that was quite a few people again. And uh, uh, yeah, I, th- I think that they did it right you know vegas vegas is fun to go party but it's it's not vegas darts there's no darts around uh that area mm. uh you know on the east coast is where where, where all the steel tip events are uh where, where a lot of uh new york has a great uh dart following uh and then in, you know in, at basically in the heart of the city yeah it was great um, but but same thing for me, not having enough stage experience, it, it's quite overwhelming going on that stage. And uh, uh, obviously you prepare a little bit different than wh- when you do on the floor. But uh, I just chalk it up to experience. And uh, obviously I didn't have a great 
first round draw if there even is a great first round draw but uh yeah once he started hitting double doubles on me i was like oh here we go it's yeah he he just played really well obviously and uh then the, the basically the big day was saturday for me uh, with the north american championships and same thing very edgy missing doubles early on but then uh taking taking the the win to go to the semis but then Jeff Smith was uh, on on another uh, level that weekend. Just uh, yeah, he he does really well on stage, and and that shows. Yeah, it was. Uh, I think Jeff is the 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 difference in experience. Really, he's been at that level for well over a decade now, and yeah, I think fantastic, fantastic performance from him, and I think. Yeah, it's in terms of standard, I'm sure all the guys in that tournament are on the standard of Jeff. It's just a little bit of experience, I think, told, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think, you know, all eight of the challengers, uh, so does I mean, we 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 all know we can play, you know, it's it's just is it going to come out uh, on, on stage? That's the, the key. But uh, yeah, it was it was a great event. Um, I hope they'll keep it going over there and uh. I even heard that there's talks that they might add a second event, uh, mm-hmm. which yeah, it would be awesome to see uh, that happening and uh, you know keep progressing uh, with darts. I think you know that we probably talked about it before. The the hardest part is um, that the travel. You know, in the U.S., it's not easy to get around. Not like in in Europe where you jump on a plane for fifty minutes and you're you know you're at the destination here. It's hours and, and and i road trip to chicago to play and we're like oh it's only an eight hour drive well from the netherlands you're in the south of france and eight hours driving so the, the, yeah the dynamics is a little bit different oh well, yeah i really appreciate your time jules um keep up the good work on on the pro tour and hopefully we'll chat uh before the year's out fingers crossed leading up to uh the big one at ali pali that'd be great <laughs> thank you <laughs>